In this video, I'll show you how to set up the Pro Workspace in Adobe Captivate. Okay, let's get started here. So, some of you have uh, commented or, or sent me messages about how Adobe Captivate looks for my particular desktop. You've obviously seen it because of my YouTube videos, and you might be asking yourself, well, why doesn't my copy of Captivate look the same as Paul's? And uh, the reason for that is I've set up my own workspace. And I'm gonna talk about that today. There's a lot of features that I take advantage of, so I want them readily at hand. Um, but let's start from scratch. And for those that are interested, uh, I'm gonna show you also how you can reset your workspace back to normal here. So. I'm gonna close my copy of Adobe Captivate for, Captivate for now. And we'll just, uh, we're not gonna save that. And what we're going to do is we're gonna to navigate to a particular location in your installation of Adobe Captivate. Now, for me, I'm uh, obviously running a PC version. This is Windows 10, and I've installed Captivate 9. And if you navigate to your C drive under Program Files and under the Adobe folder, this is the default location, mind you. Uh, if you've changed that, you'll need to navigate to that location. Then it says Adobe Captivate 9 X64. It could be um, X32 if you've installed the 32-bit version. Um, actually, I'm not even sure if the 32-bit version is available. Uh, regardless, we're looking for a subfolder or folder within the Captivate 9 folder called Utils, which I'm guessing is short for Utilities. And you'll see a couple of batch files. Now, there is a clean preferences for the Mac here. So my guess is that Mac users, uh, while they'll probably have to open up uh, uh, maybe a different location, this is where you're gonna find the same functionality for uh, Mac users. But for PC users, you'll see this clean preferences win.bat. And uh, if, you, if you double click on that, it's just gonna quickly run that batch file. And what will happen is that when you launch Adobe Captivate 9, uh, again, and we'll do that right now. Uh, we'll just go to my Captivate 9 install and we'll just click on the security alert there just give this a moment, you'll see, you should see Adobe Captivate 9 opening up as if I just installed it for the very first time. Now I am seeing the traditional splash screen where I choose a different type of project, but it's showing up on my other monitor, so it won't be in the video itself. But as you can see, Here's pretty much Adobe Captivate as if it were coming right out of the box, uh, metaphorically speaking, of course, uh, brand new. So we have our, our standard toolbar here. We have our standard drop-down menus. Uh, I am seeing the film strip. The timeline is collapsed and the properties inspector isn't open up, nor is the library. And here's your opportunity to set up Adobe Captivate the way you want. Now I refer to it as the pro workspace. Um, I don't know if there's an official terminology for it, but it certainly is a custom workspace. And there's a couple things that you're gonna to need to do to make it persistent. So I'm gonna go into my edit dropdown menu and select preferences. Alternatively, you can press shift F8 and that's gonna open up your preferences window here. And everything is back to default. This is a great way to just kind of reset everything if you've mucked it up and you just, you know, I've done it a bunch of times where I've selected so many things that it doesn't function the way that I want it to anymore. And uh, so you can use that batch file to, to reset everything back to normal. The main thing we need to do here is uh, we need to, uh, make uh, make some choices here that you would typically choose. But the main thing here is to enable custom workspaces, panel undocking, and we will need to restart Captivate. So we're gonna check that off and I'm gonna click on okay. 
and we're going to close Captivate. And now I'm just going to choose Captivate 9 once more. We're getting a Just say allow access there. I've got different uh, things are appearing on different screens for me, and that's part of the challenge of recording YouTube video tutorials. So here's uh, again, we're back to default here, but we now have that custom workspaces uh, option checked off. I'm just going to select blank project for now. I don't think it even matters what you choose. It could be responsive blank project. This is where you now get to set up certain things, and of course, as you know. You can turn on various uh, tools right from the Windows drop-down menu, or window drop-down menu, rather. So here, I like to have my alignment toolbar open. That's the very first thing, and what that allows for is, uh, you know, if you have multiple objects on the screen, uh, let's say I happen to have a bunch of uh, rectangles, and uh, I want them to all be the same size, if I select them all, the options that are available in the alignment toolbar make themselves available. So I can resize them all to be the same size. I can align them on the top. I can align them in the middle. All of these options are available. I can also uh, space them, uh, distribute them, if you will, uh, horizontally so that the space between them is equal. I also can choose which, uh, which layer they're on. You don't really think about it, but when you take a look at the timeline, these objects appear in a certain order, and you can change that. You can make them the lowest uh, layer, and this title becomes the top layer, or you can drop them down to the bottom, or any combination in between. Um, so that's something I always keep open. The film strip is open. I do a lot of um, custom themes. So for me, having, the ma having quick access to the master slide is important. You can access it from here. But with uh, custom workspaces open, you'll get a split. And you can quickly jump between your film strip and your master slide uh, as frequently as you wish. Of course, uh, for me, the properties uh, panel, as I call it, or properties inspector, as more people call it, uh, is something where I work in a great deal. And of course, having it open, I don't need to go find it every time I want it. Uh, it's always there for me. And uh, timing properties is important because, of course, uh, I do a lot of uh, um, synchronous uh, courses. So I, I want the narration to match the appearance of certain objects on the screen. So I have to set when they appear, how long they appear, how long they stay on the screen for. Um, you know, are they uh, display for rest of slide, things like that, transitions, effects. All of that's available from your uh, your timing panel, as you can see here. The other thing that I like to have is, of course, my quiz properties inspector. And that's, uh, you know, I don't have any quizzes yet, but that's, again, just a, a quick click of my mouse and I have that panel open. And uh, let's see, what else do I like to have here? Um, invariably, I end up with the drag and drop um, tab open at some point and it stays persistent and there's a couple other things I like to have I like to have access to my quest question pool very quickly so it's now open and will stay stay that way and uh, the notes slide notes I, I have one client in particular who does a great deal of text-to-speech and that's where that happens so Pretty much this is where I'm at. There's a few other things that uh, that maybe I'm not thinking of at this point, but um, for the most part, this is how I have my copy of Adobe Captivate set up. Some people call this the pro setting or the pro workspace. Um, I just call it Captivate, so <laughs> I keep it real simple. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If, uh, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful or informative, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.